Feed the neighborhood with a tailgate ready big bow box. It's bow time. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Extra Points. This is Colby Reese and joining me as always are the sports editors of The Breeze, Jackson Hefner and Caden Bridges. And JMU just took down UConn 44 to six, a huge win on the scoreboard, but just dominating in really all aspects of the game. What are y'all's thoughts on the big win for the Dukes? What a game. I mean, every week when we think that JMU can't get better, they somehow manage to be even better. Um, this might be the best offensive performance I've ever seen JMU put on a field since I showed up here in 2021. Um, I mean, it was just, it was an historic day. Reggie Brown was the first, is the first ever JMU receiver to pass 200 yards in a single game. Uh, Jordan McLeod put himself second in most passing yards. I believe he finished with 452, which is still behind Todd Santeo against Georgia Southern last year. Um, but still a great game from him. Um, Elijah Sherratt. Um, tied the JMU record for most receptions in a single game with 13 and had one of the most mind-boggling one-handed catches I've ever seen. So yeah, just an incredible day of football here. You mentioned dominating and they really just took control of the driver's seat in the second half. We saw them do that last week against Georgia State and we saw it again this week. You know, what was a slower first half, again, what we saw last week, they really just came out and put the game away in the second. Um, second half. Signetti said good teams play good second halves and that's exactly what they did tonight. Yeah and like you mentioned a kind of a record-breaking day on the offensive side of things. McLeod continuing off of his sixth touchdown performance last week against Georgia State with a huge game here today and uh, Reggie Brown and Elijah Surratt just continuing to just be so dominating just what a duo they are each going over 100 yards and like you mentioned Reggie hitting 200 yards never done in Jamie football history. Huge win for the Dukes on the offensive side of things. And like you said, coming out of the halftime break and just putting pouring it on, really. So what did y'all see out of that offense? I mean, it was just firing on all cylinders. You know, it took them. It's been kind of interesting because I think Caden pointed this out to me during the game. You know, they've. it used to be that um, things would start off really fast for the offense and then they would slow down in the third and then it would, you know, they'd have to make some clutch plays in the fourth to kind of get back in. This time, but, you know, this is the last couple of games we've seen slow first halves kind of build and build and build and then all of a sudden we saw this explosive third quarter and by the fourth they were up by you know something like 30 points and at that point you just kind of kill clock so i mean it was just an, in an incredible performance from them i think they really they just they had once they put their foot on the gas they just you know they kept accelerating and you know they didn't really slow down until the very end when you know billy atkins came in to take that knee We've talked about it on extra points. We talked about it after Marshall, after Georgia State. This offense is just clicking, and it's so refreshing to see, especially after, like we mentioned earlier in, like earlier in the season, there weren't as high-scoring games as there has been really recently. And I think it just speaks to the improvement of the offense as a whole. Jordan's growth, Reggie's growth, Elijah's growth. It just, like I said, is really refreshing to see, and it's great as Signetti said, to just see Jordan having fun on the field. It, I mean, it was another four touchdown day for him. So it just is really great to see from the offense, especially with how quickly and productively they're producing. And Jamie talked about it, how kind of UConn just kept playing the same coverage. And if you are let a team like that, they're going to keep running the same plays. And they got exposed a lot from their defensive backfield today. Moving on to the defensive side of things, obviously losing Jalen Green was a huge deal. But and obviously UConn isn't their biggest test left of the season. But they, I mean, UConn didn't get in the end zone, and they just kind of, you know, didn't do much on the offensive side of things. Um, so what did y'all see out of Jamie's defense shutting down the Huskies today? Yeah, I think that the fact that UConn didn't reach the end zone is huge. Um, you know, I feel like the defense did a really good job shutting them down. And, you know, to their credit, UConn is a very, they're a, they're a big team. They're very strong. They were, phys there were parts of the game where they really were kind of physically demanding and trying to kind of punish the Dukes defense, but they never, the, the defense never relented. And, you know, even at the end of the game, you know, uh, the best case scenario for the Huskies, they got a pair of field goals. Worst case scenario, you had, you know, Brent Austin, who's a name who, you know, Dukes fans might not be that familiar with, but they're going to be familiar with him tonight because he, you know, he just went off with that 81-yard pick six, you know, and that really was the dagger. You know, 
obviously Brent Austin coming in at the end and the rest of the Dukes defense that we don't normally see coming in. Mikhail Kamara said in post-game media that it was just exciting to see and he was so stoked, especially for those players that don't normally get the attention that the defensive line and the linebackers do and the normal names we hear from the Dukes defense. Another point that really stood out to me tonight, the Dukes held the Huskies um, to three and 15 third down, three out of 15 third down conversions, which was huge. Obviously we mentioned they didn't see the end zone at all tonight. Just were really potent on the defense and just shut down the Huskies and kind of came in and got the job done. Yeah, and like you said, you could tell on the sideline how excited they were. And um, players talked about it post game. That was just kind of the moment they realized that like we're ten and zero, and that's just a huge deal to get their tenth win of the season, and just a huge another dominating performance. We've talked about obviously they like to play it close, but past two weeks they have not played it close at all. So a huge win for JMU here. They get to ten and zero on the season. They'll be right back here. They'll host App State, a game that obviously had a lot of history. Uh, get um, from it last season so it should be a very fun one kickoff will be at 2 p.m right here at Bridgeforth and we'll see you before then